Howdy, it's Matt, and in this episode we are going to be chatting about the Speedy Bee Adapter 2, the Speedy Bee app, uh, and an alternative to it as well. Now, we need to just set the baseline of what on earth is Speedy Bee, let alone what is this adapter, which hasn't even been released yet, uh, and what is this app which you're talking about? Well, the app, if I get to the right page, is a free app which you can use on your mobile phone for iOS and Android, of course. And it allows you to connect your mobile phone or tablet to your flight controller on the flight line. So let's just think about that for a moment. You're on the flight line and you need to change a setting of some form. And this little app, which is free, I hasten to add, allows you to connect up to your flight controller and then pretty much change anything which you want. So I think you've kind of either ruled yourself in or out of this conversation. So if you'd like to change something in beta flight or in iNav on the flight line and not take a laptop with you, hang around because that's what we're going to be chatting about. So with that said, this is a new adapter, which literally is on pre-order right now. I have been to Banggood and I've asked for a review sample. Now, I, I need to put this into balance for you because there's two options for you when it comes to this app, okay? The first option is this new adapter, which is not even been released yet. And the other option is to get a USB uh, uh, OTG cable. Now I'm going to put a link to this one in the video description and they'll also tell you about the one thing which you need to look out for because I spent 12 quid on the one before and screwed it up and you need a slightly different one. Which is that you need to look out for the adapters can convert, in my case USB-C which is my phone, to USB-A. Okay, It needs to be in that direction because the other one I had the wrong way around. I had from USB-A to USB-C and that doesn't work. Uh, so it needs to be that way around, and I'll put a link to this item, which I own. I own it. I don't know where it's bloom and gone though. Uh, so <laughs> I've lost mine, so I'm gonna have to. It's only five quid, so I'll just buy another one. Uh, but but the point being is that this has worked really really well, and I have found it very useful on the flight line. Now you may be wondering, well, Matt, that's really cheap for a fiver, but what? Why would I want this adapter? And that's where the cool bit comes in. The difference between just using, and by the way, I'll put links to all these things in the video description for you, uh, including the links to the apps as well, is that the difference between the adapter 2 and just a USB cable is the adapter 2 allows you to flash firmware onto the device, which is just beta flight currently. I foresee iNav coming in the very, very near future. Uh, and also the adapter works via Wi-Fi. And then you may have noticed on the right hand side here we have the XT30, XT60 connector uh, and this little 1S connector down there so you can power this from both a 1S battery or up to 6S as well. You can see that you can up upgrade your flight controller literally on the flight line. Now rather than continue to talk about this adapter which we will get here in uh, in a week or two, fingers crossed time. What I would like to do is focus upon the actual app itself. So what I'm gonna do is that I've got a video recording app for my phone. Uh, so I'm gonna go and hit start now on the phone and it's counting down. And the thing to keep in the back of your mind is that you can download this app to your phone, whether it's an iPhone or an Android device and then run it because it's got a demo mode down at the bottom. So I've been and clicked on the demo mode. Now I'm not really, uh, I'm an iNav fan, fixed wing, so that's what we're gonna take a look at. And what we can see on here is, uh, in the demo mode, we can literally go around and play with the vast majority of the settings on our phone. And what you'll quickly work out is that it doesn't have every single feature in there, but it has everything which you would probably need on the flight line. So in setup, we're gonna have a look at the ports tab. Maybe you, maybe you needed to change one of your ports. Uh, if we go into calibration, you could also calibrate your device on the, on, the, on the flight line as well. You can change your configuration. Now, one thing which I did notice is that if I change this from multi-rotor to aeroplane and then load mixer, is that what I did find down here, I, you can't read the inputs very well and the, and the uh, screen won't, won't rotate to the left. Now, I'll just click that button up there uh, and click deny on that, no. Uh, 
click deny on that a moment. So let me just go back to that a moment. Let me just make the one the one negative which I can say, the one minor grievance which I had was that the servo mixer, you in actually this one you can see stabilized roll, stabilized pitch, stabilized roll, stabilized pitch. But on more complex ones is that you don't actually see that. So I did find that a little bit frustrating because it also doesn't show you which one was selected uh, in that menu. That's the only bugbear which I've been and found just from my practical use uh, on the flight line. Uh, and again, you could also calibrate your ESC on here, check the servo movements, etc. You can change your configuration on here as well. So maybe you're on the flight line and you need to change, uh, maybe it was a new install for example, and you forgot to maybe start off with five degrees in pitch, because uh, most fixed wing models need that. You could change it here and hit save and reboot. Uh, if we go into fail safe, we can do the fail safe settings too. Uh, and again, it's just like the iNav configurator on your desktop. However, uh, it is uh, on your mobile phone, which makes things uh, just a million times easier. And I don't know which one that one was loaded or wouldn't load then. We've got advanced settings in there. Uh, we'll take a look at the receiver as well. Uh, again, it's probably initializing. We don't have one set up. Maybe you wanted to map a channel uh, or you forgot to maybe set your RSS uh, channel on there. You could also change that too. Uh, you go into your flight modes as well. Maybe you got to the, and again, I'm giving you, just chucking these scenarios at you because they're kind of real life and that's what would happen. Maybe you forgot to set up one uh, of your channels uh, is that you could then come in here add the range for channel, I don't know, 10, uh, and then hit save, as the case may be. Uh, and then you've got your adjustments. And what else have we got in here? Right, okay, we've got GPS. We can confirm that our GPS is working or not working, uh, as the case may be. Mission Planner. This is ultra cool. This would allow you to set up your own mission on your mobile phone. So imagine going to a brand new flying site. You've driven past a field, for example, and then you've been spotted. Wow! It'd be really cool if I could fly over there and over there. You could knock up a quick flying site, uh, a waypoint mission on here, save it to the EEPROM or, or just save the mission to the flight controller, unplug, off you go and go and set your flight. Now, I am curious to what that little icon is there. Now, the one setting which I haven't seen on here just yet. Oh, uh, we got terrain. Yes. Okay, I think I'm in the middle of the sea. That's why uh, we're not seeing a lot. If I zoom out, come on. I... I think it's set on zero, zero, zero. Now, if you, uh, there we go. Yes, we were set on zero, zero. We're going to have a look in, I've never seen that country. But Togo, let's go to Togo. So imagine you are on holiday in Togo. Uh, and what you could then do is click on the map. Oh, we've got the home point over there. You could set out your mission. Uh, maybe you want to change that point. So we could change the altitude uh, on here and then go and click save. And then we could go and save that to our flight controller. Uh, OSD, I'm not sure if this one's going to load and not because we're not connected. Uh, just be aware, this does go full screen and you'll have to hit save or back. So we'll click back on there. We can set up our LEDs. What's it? Oh, you can set up black box. And the last one is your CLI command. So you could type in here and I, I don't know if this is going to work. You hit diff. N no, it's not going to work, is it? Because we don't have a flight controller uh, set to it. But... I hope that you have, oh, there we go. What was the one which we couldn't get to work? Uh, it was PID tuning, which wouldn't load for me, which I'm not, oh no, there it is. It's loaded in the background. Uh, but that's the app. That is the SpeedyB app. And for the price of a USB OTG connector, which was for, we'll say five quid, we'll say $10, all right? Uh, to be able to change the vast majority of your settings, in, and for us, we're interested in 9 being fixed wing pilots, but you could also do beta flight as well. Uh, I think is, well, the app's free, and the cost of a cable is also really pretty inexpensive, and it means you don't have to go and lug a laptop uh, to the flight line. And it's that just that nice emergency thing to have uh, at your disposal, because that, does, that uh, connector really does not take up much room in the flight bag. And the same, if we get back to our original point, the Speedy B2 adapter is also not particularly that big, really, is it? And you can literally imagine you've got your plane on the side. Uh, you could be, go and connect that up to your uh, 
flight controller uh, and then sit back on the bench because it uses a so unlike the OCG cable uh, which is oh, you have to connect into the bottom of your phone with this one it gets connected via Wi-Fi uh, and yeah just makes things a little bit easier and we can see on either connected up to a little uh, 1S quad which I think is pretty cool so it covers literally the ranges from a mass massive great big aircraft to a tiny little quad. Now, there was some cows which I was gonna mention, which was, it, it's A, I'll put a link to their website in the video description so you can read the rest of the details. Now, the one curiosity, and I know I've gone slightly off topic, is that I didn't spot this, but Runcam appears to be the app producer for this. So you've got Runcam Co, which creates the Runcam app, uh, it, the Speedy Bee seems to be backed by Runcam, or there is a direct relationship there between the two. Uh, so I did look up the Speedy Bee as a trademark, and it went to a different company which wasn't Runcam. So maybe I, I don't know how this is working. It was just just a little bit of curiosity, which I thought, which is, I, I found it interesting, and hence why I'm sharing it with you. So with that said, what I, like like what I'll do is I'll put a link to the Speedy Bee app. And remember, on the bottom of the screen, you can go into, if we can, if I disconnect, you can try this app in demo mode, which I think is super cool. Uh, and then, of course, you could go and try it as Betaflight as well. Uh, very, very similar interface. Uh, and if you were connecting via a USB OTG cable, you would hit the uh, USB icon on the right hand side. You can also connect using Bluetooth. Uh, Maybe if you've got a Bluetooth adapter uh, attached to your flight controller, uh, or you could also use Wi Fi, which we were mentioning a few moments ago, which is one of the key attributes to the OCG, sorry, to the Speedy Bee adapter too. So, like I said, I have been and asked Banggood. Uh, for a review version of this because I think it's really curious to see what exactly can we do with this adapter uh, and how does it compare, we need to be brutally honest, how does it compare to a inexpensive USB lead instead in real life circumstances. So with that said, I would be really, really curious to wonder like what do you think of this? Is this something which you would use on your flight line? Hey, are you already using the OTG cable and the SpeedyB app? Let me know what you think of it. I've personally found it super useful. Uh, the times when I have needed it and I haven't lost the blooming cable, like I said, I'm gonna pop back on Amazon and order another cable because I don't have the adapter right now. Uh, and I'm gonna grab myself because it has been really, really valuable. So let me know what you think. Is it something which you would buy? Is it something which you would use? Have you already been used it? Yes, no, let me know down in the comments section underneath this video, because I'd really, really value your feedback. Now, obviously, if you're new here, howdy, I'm Matt, welcome aboard. Normally, I would have the webcam on, but to be honest, I really need a shave and I'm a little bit embarrassed. Anyway, with that said, welcome aboard. Don't forget to press the red subscribe button and of course press the bell notification on you balls so it notifies you when the next video is out. It could be we are taking a look at the Speedy B Adapter 2. We could be maybe looking at this app again or we could be dispatching some foam. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, as always, for myself, Matt, thank you very much for taking the time to join me here for today's episode, and I'll see you again shortly. Cheerios!